Welcome to One Man's Tracks, the second-hand music channel. This week, I discovered a band headed by a driven and heavy-hearted multi-instrumentalist singer-songwriter who converts his personal and at times tragic circumstances into these moving and uplifting musical stories. His name is Mark Oliver Everett, and his band is called Eels. Born in Virginia in 1963, he was a drummer from an early age, eventually learning on his parents' upright piano and his sister's guitar. His father, famed quantum physics theorist Hugh Everett, was very detached and passed away when Mark was only 19 years old. In 1987, he'd pack up his things, move to California to pursue a music career, and in 1991, he would sign a deal with Polydor Records. After a pair of solo releases under the name E in 1991 and 1993, he'd formed the band in LA with Jonathan Butch Norton on the drums and bassist Tommy Walter. They'd become one of the very first bands to ever sign with DreamWorks Records, and they would get to work recording their debut. This. is Eels' very first album, released in August of 1993, the very first release ever through DreamWorks, produced by E himself and co-produced by John Bryan, Michael Simpson, and Mark Goldenberg. This is Beautiful Freak. The band's blending of alternative rock styles and this album's unique production provides the listener with these pleasant pop overtones and hooks while still being cut through with Everett's raw, emotional, soft yet gritty delivery. It is this textured indie Americana LP that helps to confront some difficult emotions while still maintaining some escapist themes. Soaring and soft-spoken rock, this album endears itself with these comfortable yet vulnerable and at times frustrated cuts who find a way to gently fill a space with their fuzzy reflective atmosphere hitting with a simultaneous sense of hope and hopelessness. At times it can feel dreary, but it always seems to be looking forward to a brighter tomorrow. This is just a fantastic introduction to E's voice and vision, his third in an ever-growing catalog of strong, modern singer-songwriter records, whose Eel's accompaniment helps to make it feel even more Full and flowing. Those helping hands that enable his invaluable, elevating narratives to sneak their way into the backdrops of many a film score, as well as just being the score to many people's day-to-day -day lives. I personally felt really touched this week listening to Eel's music from one album to the next, its ability to somehow perfectly surmise my own experiences just has me totally enamored with this man, his band, and his ability to somehow process his terribly unfortunate existence. Thankfully, probably for both us and he, this record was released just before even more misfortune befell Mr. Everett, and so we can kind of ease into his repertoire with a little bit less weight. By starting here, we get to be introduced to the eels with Beautiful Freak's energetic post-grunge lead single. Nova Kane for the soul. Starting out by attacking his struggles with intimacy, you get this somewhat detached track about feeling numb and wanting to stay numb in order to stay detached. The feelings, the connections, they're too intimate, they're too overwhelming. This one's a big hit. It goes off, but it's not really like anything else you'll hear from Eels. It's kind of the band experimenting a little bit, finding their sound, and it works, but it's just kind of different than what you can expect for the rest, and in that sense, it's kind of similar to the following track, Susan's House, which is a little out there in another direction. Tonally, this one's much closer to your standard eel song, but stylistically, it sounds like a funky soul coughing track about the curious things that he encountered while walking to his girlfriend's house. It's got these interesting recording techniques, these quirky spoken word verses, and it's a rare match for that SC track, The Incumbent, with a far sweeter hook and chorus. 
Going over to Susan's house, she's gonna make it right. I find there's this overarching character brought out by the interesting production choices they use on this album that give it this sort of special aesthetic. Like the weird kind of crowded ambient noise in the intro to Rags to Rags that maybe signals the rejection that leads to this track's simple yet effective, catchy alt-rock chorus. Onto the title track that's once again about Susan. This time we get an endearing and intimate celebration of individuality in the form of a heartfelt ballad with sparkling keys. Then some distorted, moody guitar tones wail in for a killer track called Not Ready Yet. Fantastically gripping, emotional builds that drive home this one's uncertain struggle. Now for what is likely most people's first introduction to an eel song due to its inclusion on the Shrek soundtrack. My Beautiful Monster is short and sweet. It's full of these incredible modernized velvet underground isms just tickling those right tones. Oh, it's an idyllic track about a beautifully loving relationship and I just love it, even 20 years after first hearing it. From there we get Flowers, this conversation with God. It uses this heavenly choral sample that contrasts the defeated vocals that talk about the realities of everyday hardships and the struggle to not just turn into another asshole that goes around bringing other people down. The album continues low and dejected for the judgmental and I guess sort of forgettable track guest list. It does pick back up for mental, which kind of feels like a narrative continuation of that conversation that was taking place on Flowers. A sort of cry for help after being beaten down, neglected, and abused, and then lashing out at all those that call you crazy for the way you act after all of that abuse. Spunky retells this album's important message of living for yourself and finding your own way. It's told through the eyes of a little orphan girl who knows that she can save the world in her own little way, but it's not going to be by sitting still and conforming. It's a free-for-all, free-for-all, free-for-all. Nearly finished with Your Lucky Day in Hell. It shares a title with E's autobiography, at least the German version. The English version has a title that's from a different eel song. Things the Grandchildren Should Know. It's a little book I'm looking forward to getting my hands on once I've finished processing all of Mr. Mark Oliver Everett's fantastic music and want to learn a little more. That aside, Your Lucky Day in Hell is this album's fourth single, and it popped up in a number of films throughout the late 90s. It sees Mark sing speaking his way through an eerie cinematic tune towards its blissful, floaty, and cautionary chorus. The last four minutes of this 44 minute ride are spent with Manchild, a soft Lou Reed-esque search for maternal love and acceptance, shaking off that background noise and drifting away in a innocent embrace that tells you that somehow you're gonna be all right. It's such a solid showing with a beautiful arc and just the beginning of a relentless stream of excellent Eels albums. Somehow holding on to some of those sentiments and managing to persevere through all of these incredible losses, terrible hardships that he's gone through. He's remained mindful throughout over 30 years of making music. Now he's put out 14 albums under the Eels moniker. Sure, he took a little break in 2014. He got married for the second time, had his first child at age 54, and unfortunately also got divorced for the second time as well. He came back in 2018 with the deconstruction, and most recently he released this sort of upbeat, quarantined LP titled Extreme Witchcraft. A bit different, but still that same awesome songwriter that you know and love, and that album probably just came out of the lack of being able to tour their 2020 album, Earth to Dora. If you enjoy this album, I sure recommend checking out the whole Eels catalog. Jump into Electroshock and 
right on through to extreme witchcraft at your own pace. A lot of these albums will grow on you the more you listen, so take your time. I'm so inspired by the fortitude, the consistency. I'd love to get a chance to see him live like I would all these bands, but unfortunately that big 2023 tour has no dates in Canada booked yet, and so I'm going to have to live vicariously through you guys and ask you to share your excitement and your experiences seeing eels with me down in the comments. Leave a like for making it this far in the video and subscribe for next week second-hand retrospective album review. Thanks so much for being here. Check out another one if you want, and take good care. Rags to rags and dust to dust.